Okay, so this question will be split up um, onto this, yeah, over there. And here we've got the first question. So it says, what is meant by the term um, isolated system in physics? Okay, so we obviously know that this is going to be something to do with the law of conservation of momentum. And when your teacher explained it, they may have referred to the conservation of linear momentum having to, it only works when you have a isolated system. Okay, so an isolated system, so for example, if you had to have a look at this over here, okay, an isolated system is when there are no external forces, like there will be no friction acting on these tires over here, um, there's no applied force that's busy pushing both of these objects, there is no external forces, it's only um, this cart and this jet, for example, um, there's no friction, no, as we said, applied forces, no tension forces, nothing like that. Yes, there may be some forces in between over here. For example, when this jet flies off the front, maybe there's a little bit of friction over here. But what we know is that the friction for the jet, if the jet moves this way, then the friction will try act that way. But then on the cart, there will be friction acting in the opposite direction. So those are internal forces and they will cancel each other out, okay? So um, the definition of an isolated system is a system, or let's say an isolated, think about the word isolated, it means it's by itself, okay? So an isolated system is one in which no external forces, let's write that a bit better, forces are present. Okay, so I'll give you some time just to check that out. Now let's quickly go read over here. So it says, during an experiment, a rocket of unknown mass is mounted on a toy cart of mass 20 kilograms. Okay, so we don't know the mass of the rocket, but we know that this toy cart is 20 kilograms. The cart rocket combination moves at a constant speed of 2.5 along a horizontal floor, as we can see over here. At a certain time or instant, the rocket is fired in the direction of motion at a speed of 30 meters per second. As a result, the cart slows down. Think about that, guys. Some students do struggle with this. But if you've got this cart and this um, rocket busy moving along at 2.5 meters per second, so the rocket is currently not moving. It's just moving on the cart. Suddenly, the rocket engine switches on and it starts accelerating in this direction. Think about what that would do. It would almost slow this car down a little bit because there's some type of backwards force that would cause the, the car to slow down a little bit. It's the same thing if you have like a, if you have for example like a gun, okay, now you know my drawing skills are not that great, but let's say you've got a gun with a bullet. When I don't know if you've ever shot a gun before, like at a shooting range or anything like that, but when the bullet gets shot in that direction, the gun actually moves in the opposite direction. It has some type of kickback or a recoil. And that is the same thing here. You've got this jet that gets shot in that direction and it's gonna cause the it's gonna cause a, a force on the cart in that direction. It doesn't mean the cart's gonna move backwards because the cart was already moving at 2.5 meters per second. But what it will do is it will cause the cart to slow down, okay? Um, and then it says, as a result, the cart slows down to a speed of 0 0.6, as shown in the diagram. Okay, so we've got all of that. Now it says, use relevant physics principles to explain why the firing of the rocket will slow down the cart. Now this is Newton's third law, Newton three. What Newton's third law tells us is that if an object exerts a force on another object, so for example, if you walk up to a wall and you punch the wall, then that wall is technically going to punch your hand back. I mean, that, that sounds pretty stupid, but um, think about it. If you punch a wall, you, you, you are, you're going to feel it in your hand. The reason is, is that the same force that you gave to the wall, the wall is going to give that back to your hand. And that's why your hand is painful when you punch it. So um, that's Newton's third law. If a body A exerts a force in a body B, then body B exerts a force in body A. It's the same magnitude, just opposite in direction. 
Okay, so I originally thought it was probably some type of engine or whatever, but it's it's yeah, I don't actually think that this rocket has any like engine or anything like that. I think that the toy car itself has some type of device over here that is going to shoot this uh rocket forward, okay? It's going to it's going to propel that rocket forward. So the car the car is going to exert a force on the rocket to the right. So according to Newton's third law, the rocket would exert a force on the car to the left, okay? So you can just say here for this question, it's only for two marks, according to Newton's third law, whoopsie, according to Newton's third law, the rocket will exert a force to the left on the toy, uh, what did they call this thing, a toy cart. Okay, then this question says, calculate the mass of the rocket at the instant that the rocket was fired. Okay, so this is definitely going to be that formula that says that the sum of all of the momentum initially is the sum of all of the momentum final. Let's choose right as positive. And so we're just going to say m, uh, mass of the cart, velocity of the cart initial, plus mass of the rocket, uh, velocity of the rocket initial, equals to mass of the cart, velocity of the cart, final, plus mass of the rocket, velocity of the rocket, final. Now, some learners and some teachers, they will say, Kevin, 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 these two objects are together, so shouldn't we, shouldn't we have like some type of bracket over here for this part? And my answer is yes, of course, if you would like to, you can do that, but I never do it that way. I just keep it separate at all times. Okay, I just like to do it that way, but it doesn't matter if you combine it or not. Okay, so we know that the um, during an experiment, a rocket of unknown mass is on a toy cart. Okay, so we know that the cart is 20. We know that its initial velocity is 2.5. We know that the rocket's mass is unknown. Its velocity originally would be 2.5. You might have wanted to say zero because the rocket is not moving on the cart, but they're not talking about that velocity. They're talking about the velocity if you were standing and watching this rocket going past on the cart, I know it looks like the rocket is not moving. It's not moving on the cart, but it's still moving relative to the ground. And it's that that they're talking about. They're talking about relative to the ground. So don't put a zero over there, okay? Then, um, let's see, the mass of the cart is still gonna be 20. Its final velocity is 0 0.6. The mass of the rocket is the unknown, and its final velocity is 30. Okay, now we just need to simplify. Okay, so that's going to give us 50 plus 2.5 mr is equal to 12 plus 30 mr. Okay, and now if you take the MRs to the right, we're going to end up with a 27.5 MR equals to 38. And if you divide by 27.5, we should get a rocket mass of 1.38 kilograms. 1.38 kilograms.